Hey everyone, my name is Tom from WPWithTom.com and today I'm going to show you how to make a WordPress website in 2017. So in this tutorial I go over how to create a fab icon, how to add a logo if we would like, how to add home, about, and contact pages, as well as link social media icons to either the top or bottom of the website in the footer section. Here I show how to add this beautiful full width image here and the text that goes over it with buttons and how to change the button color if you would like when you hover over it. Next I go into this blog post section where you can actually click on a blog post here and open it up. Within this blog post I show how to edit the widgets on the right side here. I show how to change the title of the blog post, how to add header one text, bold text, italicized text, images, block quotes, text that wraps around an image, strike through text here, change the color, change the color and add a link as well, add a video, add a horizontal line here to break it up, and also add the social media sharing options here at the bottom as well as the comment section. So that's just part of the blog aspect of it. Now, if we go back to the home page, we'll actually be able to see that we have more here. We have this section where we can add text about our services or telling a little bit about our website. And here we can add our about section below or basically what I would like to call a why section and put a little bit more about why we actually are creating website tutorials. And then we also have this about page, which is a very basic page where I just add an image and have the text wrap around. You can edit this how you would like. And then I have a basic contact page as well here where we go into a contact form and you have the option to send it. So if you're interested, definitely feel free to check out this tutorial on how to make a WordPress website. And I go through step by step without any coding in the tutorial. So I think it's very beginner friendly and I try to really break down the process and make it as easy as possible to build out this website for someone who's just learning WordPress as a beginner. Hey everyone, the first step that we're going to have to take here to get a live website on the internet is to sign up for hosting. Now most people recommend HostGator and other hosts like that. I personally recommend TMD Hosting because I believe that they're by far the best all-around host that you can get. Now I say that for several reasons which I'm going to touch on going forward. If you've seen other videos that I've done talking about TMD Hosting, you might already know about them just from seeing these other videos, but I highly recommend them for a number of reasons. And I'm going to actually have a link in the description below in the YouTube video if you're watching this on YouTube that you can click on and go right to TMD Hosting. And when you do that, it helps me out in support of my channel here to continue to be able to make these free tutorials for everyone to see. So if you do support me in that way and use the coupon code that I'm going to give in this tutorial here, I really appreciate it. So to get started, we'll go to tmdhosting.com or in the link below, and then we'll click on WordPress hosting here once you get to the home page. Now, if we scroll down, we'll see that there's a few things that stand out. They have extremely fast SSD based websites here or hosting here. So they make your site go really fast and it's better than an average hosting company out there provides has 99.99% .99 uptime guarantee. That is pretty standard with hosting, but you really can't beat it either. And they also have a 60 day money back guarantee, which is awesome. And you can actually get started for as little as 285 a month. And if we click on that, we can scroll, it will be brought down to the plans below here. And there's a few different options to choose from. So there's a starter plan, and this is where it could be 285 a month. That will be only if you sign up for a longer duration of time. So I want to make that clear. But in the starter plan, the biggest thing to note is you can host one website. You will only have your one website. And this would work good for someone who has an established business or they have one business that they know they're going to create and build out and go from there. I will say that you can upgrade, I believe, from one to the next. And that gives me an opportunity to talk about their live chat support. So down here in the lower right, if you wanted to ask them questions about upgrading or ask them questions that you have before you end up purchasing a plan, 
they are super responsive here and very helpful and they really can probably answer your questions in a matter of a few minutes at, at most so i would highly recommend taking advantage of their support down here at the lower right if you do have questions now i use this business plan myself because you can host unlimited websites here and it gives you the standard ssl if you want to sell products as well that works really well for you it's my preference to have this one i'm not really 100% sold on you needing to have this professional here, this professional plan at $12.85 a month. But if you wanted certain things that it can bring to you, like if you wanted this better performance here with this three times the performance, and then it has Let's Encrypt technology. And, you know, if you really want to have something like that, you can. But I really don't think there's that much of a benefit to having this professional. I think the business or the starter, depending on what scenario you're in, is the way to go if you're someone who's aspiring to have a web development company or something like that I would definitely recommend that you go with the business plan and if we wanted to sign up let's just say we go through the sign up process I'll actually show you how to get a very cheap plan here with the starter package before I do that I actually want to point out you get a free domain name with any of these hosting plans which is totally awesome and very rare in a hosting industry that doesn't really happen with most websites so that is a great thing to take advantage of, of is this free domain name so let's go to sign up here on the starter package and I'm just going to go through the process step by step with you I'm actually not going to sign up for a another hosting package since I already have a business one with them we'll go through the steps together here now here's where you get your free domain name and as I said that's very rare in a hosting industry so you can choose your domain name so let's just say your domain and we'll just say a bunch of random numbers and then if you wanted to you can choose .com, .net, .org, .us if you wanted to .co.uk, .uk, .cn there's a lot of different ones you can choose .tv, .me all different ones now I recommend a .com if you're in the US it's the most common we have here in the US and it's basically the most well-known and that's what people think of at least in the United States when they think of a website they think it ends in .com now they might think a charity is .org and .net is not unheard of but when you get to like .us it's less common .biz, .info they're all a little less common and so I would go with a .com if possible here and since it's free you might as well try to get a .com in my opinion so after that you can click proceed you'll be brought to the next page here and it says congratulations your domain name is available and I, I figured it would be with all these numbers right so next if we scroll down here you'll have to fill out the customer information here and after you're done doing that I'm not going to go through that myself I just want to show you that you can pay with credit card or with PayPal here so there's two different options for whichever one works best for you and after you filled out that information I wanted to show you this down here now this is your data center and you want to choose the data center that's closest to you so they have ones that are all over the world if you happen to be based in another country let's say you're based in London or Japan you would go with this one London or Tokyo or Sydney for Australia whatever one you happen to be in or near that's which one you want to go with and I know that many of the people that view this are from a worldwide audience so it doesn't always apply to you to just go with Chicago like I'm going to do you want to look at this and choose whichever one is best for you especially if you're going to be serving an audience within your region let's say you live in Japan and you want to have Japanese customers you're going to want to have Tokyo as your data center and it's awesome that you get this choice a lot of hosts don't even give you this option and it will help serve your customers better so I'm actually going to uncheck this domain privacy and gonna leave all these unchecked these are kind of like little upsells that I don't think are hundred percent necessary when you're getting started if you decide that you want to upgrade to them later you totally can do that but for now I'm going to leave those blank and now we're going to look at the periods for the payment periods here so right now we're looking at it being 4620 to get started here for 12 months and we get a free domain name included in that a domain name at least a com like we selected would usually cost about 12 to 15 dollars depending on a website you can get a little cheaper or a little more it all depends on 
what's going on with promotions on websites. In general, it's around $12 to $15. So if you knock that off, you're looking at about $31 to $35 range for your host. So in this part here, we're going to look at right here is the period. If we wanted to make this one month, it goes up to $8.85 per month. But something you could do is sign up for one month see if you like it and then you can upgrade later to 385 a month that is an option I actually would rather just be locked into the lower rate so let's say we want it to be locked into this 4620 for a year I can actually give you a code and it's WP with Tom 7 that's WP with Tom 7 and we'll click apply and now it goes down to 4297 so it takes 7% off the total purchase and again, this does help support me to make more videos for you guys going forward. So I really appreciate it if you do use this coupon. And as far as I know, this is the highest coupon offered for TMD hosting. If you wanted to, you could also do that off one month and get that 885 down to 823. But you see it's a bigger effect on a longer period of time that you use it. You can literally get three years of hosting for just 9542 and a free domain name with it. That's unheard of in hosting. So that's something you could definitely take advantage of if you wanted to commit to a longer period of time with TMD hosting. And I and I say to contact them and look at reviews and kind of check them out and see for yourself if you're really questioning it. But I highly recommend them. And going forward, that's who I'm going to use to go through the WordPress installation and everything going forward. So after you're happy, you can actually read the terms of service if you would like. And then you would click this and then just click check out. All right, so after we get this welcome email from TMD Hosting, we're going to want to make sure it looks something like this. If you haven't gotten it, maybe you can contact their support through the live chat and ask them what's going on. But I honestly got it pretty quickly when I sign up for a hosting plan with them. So I assume you'll get it pretty quickly as well. It only took a couple minutes to get, just like a normal email. So once you get it, you can sign up through the client area. You'll want to click on client area, and you're going to use the same email and password that you set up earlier. So in my case, mine's my email, and I'll just put in my password now, and log in. Now, you might be prompted to do something like this. I'm just going to click maybe later. I'm not going to mess around with that. In this tutorial, I'm just going to get started with getting our WordPress installed on for our website. We actually can, can click out of this order page here now. And now we can go scroll down here. This is what we would call the control panel. And I guess I'll just show you around a little bit in this client area here. If you need services, you can click on the services tab. For domains, if you want to register another domain name or transfer one, you can do that here. To place an order, for something else you can do that here for other hosting for your billing if you want to do something with billing invoices credit card details whatever and this is probably the most important one to most people here support you can actually submit a support ticket here and I've done that for something that was more technical that I needed assistance with through the control panel area here and I actually had a response within minutes that's not going to happen on other hosting platforms and I've experienced this with many of them before where I needed something done urgently. Maybe the website got hacked or something like that in the past. And I really need help. And to have someone be able to respond to you in minutes and start resolving the issue is awesome. So that's where you would submit a ticket for something technical that you really need help with. And there are tutorials in here. Even though I haven't explored that, I imagine that's probably pretty helpful and useful for beginners as well. So if we scroll down here, we're going to see where it says cPanel login on the right. We're going to click that and you should have just one name here. I actually have a few so I'm going to click login there and now when we log in what we're going to need to do to install WordPress is we're going to scroll down all the way to the bottom and now it says Softaculous Apps Installer and we're going to click where it says WordPress and now we're just going to click install now and here I'm going to leave this the same as HTTP. You have different options. I'm going to leave that as is. And here I'm going to choose the domain name that I want. And I'm going to choose optimizer.tomswptutorials.com in this case. 
And I'm choosing that one because the theme we're making is actually called Optimizer. Now you might only have one domain name to choose from and that's fine, but I wanted to point out that this is called a subdomain name here where I have a name and then a dot and then my primary URL here. So that's what it could be. It could be blog.tomswptutorials.com. It could be just about anything dot and then your primary domain name. So that's what a subdomain name is called here. So if we want to, we can go down here and I highly recommend that you delete this WP from here and have this be blank. I, I would highly recommend that you do that. If not, you might run into some little issues going forward, but it could be resolved through their support tickets, I assume. But I would definitely delete this here going forward. If we continue on and scroll down, we can change site settings like our site name. If you already know what it's going to be, you can change it. Maybe I would change it and I would put in optimizer or something like this in my case. If you know what your site name is going to be called, you can do that. Or you can just leave it as blank. And then it says site description. I'm going to leave that as is just so I can show you as an example once we get in there. But if you wanted to have a little description, you can add that as well. And next, if we scroll down a little bit, we can go to the admin account area. And I'm actually going to change this. And I highly recommend that you change your admin to something else that's not just going to be easy to guess like admin and password or admin and pass. So let's also change this information here. And I'm actually going to hide it and I'm going to write something in. And I'm having a strong password here. You should probably do the same. And here you can actually choose your admin email and I would actually make this an email that you can use to recover the password in case you forget it. So that's highly recommended to change an email to an actual email you have access to here. And then if you're happy with that, we can scroll down. You can choose a different language if you want to change the language on the site. And you have an option to add this plugin. This is a decent plugin, but I'm actually not going to add it in this case. And what it does is it li limits the login attempts that someone trying to hack into your website can use. I actually have a few different videos on my YouTube channel about other security measures that you can put in place that might be a little bit better than this and a little more updated and recent than this one. So it isn't a bad plugin, but I would recommend that we just use different ones than that personally. And if we scroll down here, we're just going to see uh, themes that we can choose from, but we're going to use the optimizer theme and we'll just click install. Now, if we go up here, it says that it's being submitted and then it goes up to 100%. And now it says, congratulations software was installed successfully and if we want to we can actually go right to the website by going right here you can see what it looks like on the front so I'm going to right click and open that in a new link and I'm going to click on this one right here this optimizer.tomswptutorials.com slash wp hyphen admin and this is what we're going to have to remember when you log into your site you're going to have to put your domain name dot com dot net whatever it is slash WP hyphen admin. So you want to remember that when we actually click on this, we'll be logged in the first time. So now it logs us right in to the WordPress dashboard. This is called the dashboard right here. So if we wanted to log out, I'll show you what it looks like. If we go up to the upper right here and hopefully you remember your password, we can click log out and then you would want to put your username and then your password. And this is where we'd log in. It says WP hyphen login in this case. But if you put WP hyphen admin, it will always take you to this login area here. If you do forget your password for some reason, you can click lost my password and it will be emailed to the email that we just set up on the previous screen. You can also choose to remember yourself here. If you don't always remember passwords very well, that could be an option you want to do. And then we'll just click login to log back in here to the dashboard. Now real quick, if you wanted to change some of this information, you can go up here, hover over this in the upper right, and then go to Edit My Profile. And if we scroll down here, we can see that there's the email that we have, the contact email. And then down here, we can generate a new password and actually type in a new password, whatever you want it to be, and 
then if you wanted to save it you would just update your profile I'm not going to do that with this password but that's how you would actually put a new password into place generate password type it in and then update profile and then your new password would be in effect so that's how you can reset your password and get started here with our installation now real quick to see what we have this is what we have right now on optimizer for our website now there's a lot that we can do with that this isn't actually the theme that we're going to be using this is the default theme that comes in 2017 with WordPress so that's what we're seeing here but we're going to get in to start changing this and editing it with a theme that we're going to be using called optimizer that we're going to install here shortly all right so to get started we're actually going to go back into the profile area here and we actually can X out of these other windows at this point we only need this page open and the dashboard area here so to get started let's go to where it says appearance and then we'll go to themes and in here we have three themes we have the 2017 2015 and 2016 themes these themes by default come within the install when you first install WordPress on almost any hosting provider so it's just a basic thing that comes with the install and we can actually click in the middle here and click where it says theme details and then in the lower right we can click delete on the older ones and I will point out that you actually have to have one in this position you can't have a page set up here without having one of these themes is active you have to have one active so I'm going to actually click on this one in the middle here and delete this one as well for this 2016 so now we're left with just this one here and to add a new theme we can just go up here and click add new at the top and the first thing that I'm going to do when we get to this point is just show you around you can actually go and look at the popular themes and there's lots of different themes in here that you could maybe use sometime if you're interested in exploring with other themes that are out there I'm actually doing tutorials on some of them that are in here because they are popular and well-made themes that I expect to be updated often and that's key with these free themes that so you want them to be kept up with as WordPress versions go into effects and things like that so you definitely want to be on the ball with those and by getting a very popular free theme you're more likely to have it updated to the current version and have less security risks involved so to search for a new theme I'm actually going to go right here and I'm just going to type in optimizer and there it is the purple one that showed up here if we scroll down there it is optimizer right here it has this purple image with the mountain in the background and I'll just click install and it will say installing this may take a moment and now it says installed I'm just going to click activate on it now right here and you also can click activate if it was over here now I'm going to click on this theme details here in the center of this 2017 theme I'll click theme details and in the lower right I'll click delete and I'll confirm that and now we're just left with this optimizer theme so now that we've got this theme installed let's just go back over here and refresh and we'll see what this looks like and now we'll see that it has this theme installed here we have this big image at the top but not a whole lot else going on with the site and we're going to get into editing that going forward all right so to get started what we're going to need to do is we're going to go back into the dashboard area and we're going to clean up things a little bit here so we already cleaned up the other themes and deleted them and by cleaning up some of these other things we can actually speed up our website slightly by not having so much junk weighing it down that's unnecessary so let's go to where it says posts right now we'll click on posts on the left side and now that we're in this post area here we actually can see this hello world post and this is basically where your blog post would go if you wanted to add a post that's how you would add a blog post and we're going to touch on this a bit later as we go progress through this tutorial here but I just wanted to show you that right now if we go to the home page we can actually see that it says hello world and it has this post for this hello world right here on the blog so this would be where our blog is right here on the home page of the website and we would have to actually go and click trash to get rid of it 
and then to permanently delete it we actually have to go into the trash again and then click delete permanently when you hover over that and now it says one post permanently deleted now if we wanted to we can actually refresh this front here of the site and we'll see that there's no longer this hello world post here that was just there before so that got rid of the post that wasn't one that we wanted there it's kind of just an example it's basically the way that WordPress has worked for many years now where they have this default post and they also usually have a default page so if we go to where it says pages here on the left we'll see there's a sample page and we can actually trash that as well and I'll just show you up here before we refresh you can actually see it's a sample page up here now let's go back here to the pages section in the dashboard and we'll click trash and now we'll click delete permanently on this one and again it says one page permanently deleted if we go back here to the front and we refresh we'll see that there's no more sample page here in the menu so we're kind of cleaning up these little items that come within WordPress initially installed now next we're gonna to go to where it says plugins here on the left side and we'll just click on that and on each WordPress install you usually have this hello dolly it's basically just an example of a plugin and I'm just going to delete that and click OK and this is basically to help you protect your blog from spam it says it right here I actually don't use this myself but if you want to you can activate it and use it I'm actually going to delete it for this tutorial and then I'm just going to click OK and it says they were both successfully deleted and now we have no plugins and just to go over what a plugin is real quickly I like to use it as this example I say it's like an app for your smartphone it's basically something that enhances what you have already so an example of one would be like if we have a blog post down here and we wanted to have social sharing icons we could use a plugin to have these social sharing icons on our posts and I'm actually going to go into one of those as we progress through this tutorial here but for now you kind of have a little bit of an idea of a plugin is basically something that can add more power to your existing website so just think of it as similar to an app for a smartphone or something like that now the other thing that I really wanted to go over is in the settings section there's a lot of different setting options here you can actually go into and change the site title tagline you can change your email you can change your time zone which I like to do personally and you can actually go and change the date format I like to leave it as is in this case and the time format as well when the week starts on there's a lot of options and you can save these options when you're happy with them I really don't think it requires too much to get into this page here but I did want to point out something important in the permalinks structure here now this permalink structure basically shows you what your post will look like so if you have a post and it's the default is day and name here you, it would be your website dot com dot net whatever it may be and then it will show this afterwards now for SEO which is search engine optimization basically that's what helps you get found within Google and other places other search engines like that you would want a better structure than this you would actually want this one right here post name so you would like to change this to post name and then if you had a post about let's say um, you're doing a post about cartoons for example yours would say your website.com and then it would say forward slash cartoons if your post was named cartoons that you wrote a blog post on it will take on the name of the post that you add here when you go to add a new post so it's a lot better for search engines to recognize what you're actually writing about and it's very important to change this to post name for the best results within search engines after you're happy with that change you can go down here and just click save changes now if you'd like to you can totally go in here and explore these other settings like the writing reading discussion media I wouldn't be too worried about and kind of see what works for you they're pretty self-explanatory and I don't think you need to spend too much time in there the biggest one was this permalink structure that you needed to change to basically set yourself up for better rankings within Google and Yahoo and Bing and other search engines 
So after you've done that, we're actually going to get into making our menu and start customizing out this website a bit. Now to make our menu here, it's actually pretty easy. We can go to where it says appearance on the left side. And when we hover over that, we're going to actually go to where it says customize in this case. Normally on a WordPress theme, you would go to menus, but on this one, we're actually going to go to customize for this case. And now when it loads, we're going to see what makes this optimizer unique. So we're actually going to have a little tour here and it's basically talking about this sidebar and this area as well for the customization features that it has. And then it's going to talk about this up here at the top, which we can display or hide. So I suggest that you actually read through this and then I'm just going to click start tour here and I'm just going to go through step by step. It's talking about the side area located on the left for the customizations and that's where we're going to be editing the majority of our site. And here it also talks about this area as well where the customizations are going to be able to be seen basically in live time as we make them. And then it will talk about different layouts. There's a static slider and you would get that by going to front page right here and then slider right here to change it to make different slide images here. And if we want it to go back, we can just simply click this icon here and it will go back to the main menu. Then there's also front page and then widgets here. And widgets, we're gonna get into a little bit here going forward, but let's just click back again. And then there's footer widgets as well. So that would be in footer and then footer widgets. And we can add those and the footer is at the bottom of the page. So here would be where the slider would go on a page, and this is where the front page widgets go in the center, and then the footer is down here at the bottom. So let's just click back here to go to the main menu if you're not already there. And here we're going to actually just go to where it says menus to get started. I'll just click next here, and it also talks about this front page as well. You can actually hide this area as you're optimizing your website and making changes. So let's just click next, end of tour. Now here, again, if you didn't go there yet, it's going to be menus, and then we're going to click add menu, and you're going to have to name your menu. I would usually name it main menu or primary or something like that. That's going to make it clear that it's the main one that you're focusing on, and I'll click create menu. And now I'm going to click add items. Since we don't have any pages on our website right now, since we deleted the sample one, we need to add some. First, I'm actually going to click right here and make this display as the header navigation, the primary, so it'll be up here at the top. If you want to add the footer at the bottom, you can also add it there as well. I'm just going to leave it as the top. And right here, I'm going to click to add some pages. So we're going to have to actually add pages since we don't have any other ones here. If we want, I'm going to add an about page here. And I'm also going to first add a home page then about and now I'm going to add a contact as well and I'll click add and now we have a home about and a contact page once you're happy with your menu you can actually add more if you want or add these three if you're just following along right with me you can actually go up here and click save and publish and the reason why I didn't put a blog is because I'm actually gonna have the blog on the home page here right below this large image that here at the top so the blog will be down in that area as well. So next, our menu set up now. If we want to see it, we actually, since it's a smaller view on this responsive type website, we can actually see it by clicking on here and it will pop out. Now, if you wanted to see that on the larger website, let's scroll up here and we'll refresh. And our menu should appear right here, home, about, and contact right in order. So we have a nice little menu set up right now and going forward let's just go and start editing some of this top part of the site right here. So in this part here I'm actually going to start by going over how to change this background image here. Now I think this background image looks very nice. The only reason why I would actually want to change it is because I want to show you how to have some flexibility with your backgrounds first of all and show you where to get some great images for free. But I also think that it would be good to basically differentiate yourself a little bit from others who might be using this theme because others that might not know how to use it as well might just leave this background or 
people that like the image might just leave the background. And I think it's good to make your website stand out a little bit from others that might be using this theme as well. So to get started with that, I'm actually going to open a new tab and go to unsplash.com. That's U-N-S-P-L-A-S-H dot com. And when I get here, I'm actually going to make it go into this grid format here because then we can actually see more of these images. And these images are free and it says do whatever you want, high resolution photos. So you can use these images for anything. And there's a lot of high quality, beautiful images here that you can make the background for your site. So I'm actually going to suggest that you use, if you're going to, use a darker background color with a lighter text or vice versa, use a lighter background with darker text on it. I generally prefer to use a darker background in the white text or lighter text because I think it stands out a little bit better and gives it a little bit better feel for the website and readability. So I would go through here and probably search for something that has a darker background and I would also want to, I probably would avoid these vertical images. I would go for more of a horizontal one like this. So after you find one that you like, let's say you like this one right here. You would just click it to open it. And you can just click download right here. And it will download the photo. If for some reason that doesn't work, you can sometimes right click and download it. So it should work in the download button in the upper right though. So if you want to. You can come up here and search for something in particular. And I'm actually going to use an image from a night sky. I may actually mess around with that one and see if I like it more than one I just downloaded. But if I wanted to get one with a night sky, I could simply click on it again and then download it like this. Now to add it to the website, we're going to go back to here. And there's a couple ways you can do this. We can actually click back to this, this button to go back to the main menu here. And then we can click where it says front page slider. And that's where we checked out before as we were going through the preview. And you actually can just click on here and go to change image. And you can actually drop files into this area. So if I wanted to, I can open these up and from my downloads folder and just highlight them both and drop them right in here. And then they'll load. Now these are larger images since they're 4K images, very high quality images. So it may take a little bit of time for yours to load in here, but don't worry, it is actually going. It just might take a little bit. So I paused the video there and it took about 30 to 45 seconds probably for these to load, which is maybe a little bit longer than I'm used to, but it's all right. They are up there now. Now if you want to, you can actually X out of it, the images that you downloaded down there. And let's go here and we'll change the title. And I'm just going to put it as scenic and then the alt text as scenic. Now this alt text is alternative text and it helps you to basically optimize your images a little bit better for Google and other search engines. So if you are putting something like a picture of yourself and your website is tomjohnson.me, let's say, and you have a picture, you might want to name the picture Tom Johnson and name the alt text Tom Johnson as well. This is just an example I'm using I have one of the most common names there are, so it's kind of tough for me, but you get the idea. You would want to make it relative or related to what the image is actually displaying, and it will help you out a little bit with your search engine optimization. So after you've done that, you can actually click Choose Image, and then it will refresh the page on its own when the image loads. So there it is. There's a, what our image right there would look like as the background. I don't know if I'm actually going to go with this one, but I'll actually explore with the other one as well and click change image and you can play around with this and choose whatever image you like and see which one works best for you. I actually kind of like how this one looks a little bit more but I think I'm going to mess around within Unsplash and download a bunch of them until I find one that I really like and then I'll put it as the background. But for now you guys understand where to get these images and how basically high quality they are and how it can really change the overall look of your website. So let's say I wanted to change the image. I'm just going to pause the video for a moment here and, and add the image that I actually want. So now I actually went and added the image that I wanted to have as my background here and I got this off on Splash as well. It just took me a minute to find it. I knew it was on there 
And now, if I'm happy with it, I can actually go and save and publish this at the top. And if we go back over here, we can refresh and we'll see what the site looks like now. Now we'll see it says home, about, contact with our logo over here that we're going to get into in a second. And it's on this large background here. And this is a very big image, so it takes up more space. And you can see that it kind of basically changes color as I scroll a little bit, which is a pretty cool effect that it has right there. It goes from being very blue to darker. So I like the transparent menu, so I'm going to leave that as is. If you want to change menu options, you can actually go in here, go back, and then we go to where it says header. And then we go to header again. And you can change things like the transparency, the colors in this area here. I'm actually going to go to where it says site title and logo. Now to get to that, you might want to go back and just go to header, site title and logo. And that's what this is right here. So if I were to change this, let's say I put it as WP with Tom, you can see it actually is going in real time right there. And I can write something below it as the tagline. And I can have something like learn WordPress from free tutorials. And now if I wanted to, I can scroll down a little bit and I can change the font family. If I don't like that font, I can mess around and have totally different fonts. And you can just play around with this until you find something that you like. But that's a way that you can add a quick little text logo. And if you wanted to, you actually can hide the tagline right here and get rid of it from below it. So if you enable it, there it is, and if you hide it, then it goes away. So it's up to you if you want to have that. I'm actually going to leave it without, and I may change the family here for the font, but I'm actually pretty happy with how it looks. I think it looks fine for now, and you get the idea of how to change the font size and logo here for your look of the website. So when I'm happy with that, I'm going to just click Save and Publish here, and then I'm going to move on to this section here. And now to get to that area, we're actually going to have to just click back here in the upper left for this menu. And we're going to just go into where it says front page and then slider, just where we were before when we put this image in place. And then we can go down here and it says static slide content. And we're just going to click on that for now. And it says advanced, strong, reliable. Now if we X out of this, you'll see it says advanced, strong, reliable. And then there's some smaller text below it. So we can change that. I kind of like the format that they have it in, but I'm going to just go like this. I'm going to say learn. I guess I'll do it all capitals to keep that. Learn WordPress today. And now this text below it is a smaller text. The optimizer. I'm just going to add some text onto this. The optimizer theme is an awesome free theme that I highly recommend for beginners. And I'll save that and we'll see that now the text is going to go into effect. See it says learn WordPress today. The optimizer theme is an awesome free theme that I highly recommend for beginners. So now that text has changed. If we want to, we can also change the button text here. And I'll just get into something real quick. The button text, we could just make this say about, since those are going to be our other two pages, I guess it looks a little bit better with all capitals, about. And then we can link this to the about page. But this is a placeholder here. This pound sign or the hashtag, whatever you'd like to call it, is a placeholder. And that's where we would put the link for our contact page once we actually make that page. So I'm going to leave that as about here and then I'm going to go down to button two and I'm going to put that as contact since that's our other page here. And then I'm going to, if you want to, you can change the style of the button. I'm actually going to leave it as is. I like the look of them and I like how it has a little difference in between the two buttons to make them stand out and I'll save it and publish. It also kind of goes well with this blue and white background of the stars and the sky here. So I kind of like how it is. And when you hover over this about, you can see that effect. If you wanted to get into changing that, you can definitely go into this where it says the button style. That one says hollow, which means nothing in it. And then this one is a flat one for the second one. 
So if you want it hollow, you could also make it like that. Then when you hover over it, it will light up like this. Maybe that's what you'd like to do. You can also change the background color that it lights up to as well. I'm going to leave the color as is. And for now, I'm going to leave these button links as is. But we will change that as we go through this tutorial here. Oops, but I almost forgot something actually. If you want to get rid of this optimizer logo here, you actually can go into the edit content as well. And then it's actually hard to see because of the way it's white on white here. You can actually go and remove it like that and then save and close it. And now we'll see that it goes away here, this optimizer logo. And now we're left with this, just the text instead of that image there. You can definitely leave that icon there if you like. I'm going to leave it without that here in this case. And then I'm just going to save it and publish. And now I'm going to go back here and refresh this and see that it goes away. So now if we go to the home page, we'll see that we still have this. And then below we'll have this area for our blog posts, which we're going to get in here next. All right, to get started with this blog section down here, we're actually going to have to go back into the dashboard area. So if you wanted to, you can actually just go and highlight this and delete what's there. So it just says your domain name forward slash WP hyphen admin. So we can just do that and click enter. And now we're back here in the dashboard area again. So to start making posts here for blog posts, we're actually going to have to go to right here where it says posts on the left side and we'll click add new. And now we're brought to this page. So let's say we wanted to add some dummy posts here. I'm just going to add some posts for examples. I'm not actually going to write out a bunch of text. And then I'm going to go through some of the ways to manipulate the post and also how to add them so they show up here in this section. Sorry about that. Show up here down in this section. And then we can see them live on the site. So it'll be nicely organized once we have some of the, them posted there. Sorry, I did it again. So now let's uh, start by adding a post title. And I'm just going to name this post number one. Very original, I know. And now I'm actually going to get some dummy text. And I'm going to go and look for lorem ipsum text. And basically this is... Um, text that is used on as like the standard text on websites so if we wanted to we can just grab this text here and copy it it's like the standard dummy text and I'm going to just paste this in in my case I'm actually going to enter and paste in a couple times so we have a bunch of text here now now that we're in this text I'm going to first publish these three and then I'm going to go through how to edit them so let's just make a post here and for the style that I want to generate here, I'm going to need a featured image for the post. So this post will show up in this area as an image that you can click on and then it will open up the blog post itself. So let's go and set a featured image here. We'll click set featured image. And I actually already have three, po three pictures here. So I'm going to use these three pictures for three blog posts. Works out pretty well in my case. And here you can click on one you can change the title and change the alt text for SEO purposes right here and after you've done that we can click set featured image and now you'll see this as the featured image here in the lower right of this post area some other things I want to point out before we actually post it if you wanted to add a category you can do that you can click add new category and you can write what the category is so let's just say night sky because that's really what the picture was and now if you want to we can click add new category here and now it goes under the category night sky and this is a little bit better for SEO but it also helps viewers that come look at your blog to find the correct ones if they're searching through a lot of different posts it'll be easy to find it if they look by the tags or the categories now tags right down here where this is where you might want to add more to it say the location let's say it's night sky and I'll just put Kentucky just a random place and I'll just add that scenery you know you can write whatever you want you can write a bunch of different tags here I'm just gonna leave those and now after you're happy with that you have a few different options I was gonna get into this in a little bit but I'll just show you you don't have to publish it 
immediately you can actually edit the publish time and change the date and time it gives the default date and time that it is right now for me it's actually New Year's Day when I'm making this video and you can actually change this so you can publish it at a different time so let's say you wanted to publish in a week I could go down here I mean a different month I should say you can go down here and publish it in a different month different day of the week different year different time and this is good if you have set up your time correctly within the settings area here settings I believe it's in general is the times so you can set it up to go in your time zone at a certain time if you're in a certain location that only has one time zone for your country or maybe two it would be really good if your target audience is in that local clients in that area to have the post go live when they're awake maybe earlier in the morning or when people have off things like that so it's important to schedule these if you really want something in particular I'm just gonna cancel for now and publish it immediately here by clicking the publish button now we have one post published I'm actually going to add two more just so we can see how the look is of the blog section when we get it set up now I'll just call this post number two and again I'm gonna copy in a bunch of lore myths from text here three times and here I'm gonna add a different category I'm actually going to first I'll select an image to make sure I have a good image and I'll just add this one so this one I'm going to tag mountain mountains and I'll add that as the tag and you can actually add another category like I could add this add a new category called scenic and add the category and then if I'm happy with it again I can go up here and I'll just publish it now, I'm gonna get into how to edit all this in a moment so don't worry if you're a little lost here now next we're going to add new again and we'll add blog post 3 and I'm again going to just copy in this dummy text and now I'm going to just add this one as uncategorized and I'm going to put blue sky blue night sky as the tag and add that and set the featured image as the same one that we have above at least I have above and set it as the featured image again we have to have set featured images in this case for the one I'm going to show you here and we'll publish it now once we have those three published if we actually go back here and we refresh we'll see that there's three blog posts now if you like this style for the blog post you can leave it as is and leave it in this current format with this post going like this and then having more information like recent blog posts on the right comments archives categories meta and I'll show you how to actually change those here coming up but I'm, a, I'm going to use a different blog post style than this one. I'm actually going to go back here to the dashboard. And then I'll go back to appearance and customize again. Now we can actually close out of the lorem ipsum if you're in there. I'm going to X out of it in my case. And now here we can start to make changes to this section. The blog post section. So we'll go to where it says front page. Then we'll go to front page widgets. And we'll click add a widget now we'll click on where it says post to add those in and it automatically by default changes the post structure to this which is one I prefer if you like the other structure you can totally leave it that way and I'm gonna just go through the layouts right here on the left so if we scroll down a little bit over here we'll see that there's layout one which is this one layout two will look like this have them in a line but I don't like how it doesn't resize the image to be the same so that could be something that get a little annoying if you have to keep resizing the image to fit right with these thumbnail type image sizes and then layout 4 is down here the one that we saw initially so I'm gonna leave it as layout 1 I like this look and next I'm going to actually change some of this so the title says our work up here our work right up there so we're gonna change that you can make it whatever you want it to be but I'm going to change it to say our latest blog post to make it clear because someone might not even know this is a blog they might just think it's images until you write that right here and I'm gonna say check out what we are up to and this is 
smaller text below its subtitle so you can actually write a little bit more than you have up there and it won't look bad. Now below if we scroll down here we can change the number of posts. I'm actually going to change the number of posts to be three in this case so I'm going to change this number of posts say three and then the title divider up there at the top is this right here with this symbol so if you want to you can add something else I'm gonna go with the chevron right here and it's kind of going to point down at these posts make it more clear like hey this is where the blog posts are makes it easy for the user to find I think in that way now if you want to you can also change the background and go mess around with the colors but I'm honestly not gonna get into that right now the only thing I would say is you should click on a post let's just make sure it's saved up here and then if we actually refresh or just click on a post here you want to make sure that you can still read your logo and menu here so that might be something that you need to consider changing within this section here and mess around with the colors and see what you like I'm gonna leave it this way personally and then next I'm going to actually get into how to start editing some of these blog posts here with the actual content within the post itself all right, so we're going to go over the basics here on blog posts, and I'm just going to, again, go back here, and I'm going to get rid of everything else except the wp-admin after our domain name. So we can actually do that to get right back in here to the dashboard again. And now we're going to go to where it says posts. And I'm going to work on this blog post 3, which we actually have open right now, in my case at least. And I'm going to start editing that. Oops, sorry about that keep doing that sorry so we're gonna actually start editing this blog post 3 here and to do that we can actually click on post and then edit on a blog post 3 and now we're gonna see all this dummy lorem ipsum text now the very first thing I want to point out here I know we already covered the publishing with the scheduling and categories tags and featured image we touched on all that so I wanted to just show you there's visual and then there's text and this text is actually where you would put basically HTML and this is where it would go if you're going to make HTML so if you wanted to do some HTML you could do it in here in this tutorial I'm not going to get into that I'm going to have it be more basic and we're going to be in the visual builder on this side but I just wanted to point out the two differences there between these two tags basically so the other thing I want to get into is we can click right here on this last icon here and it says toolbar toggle and if we click that it will open up more options right down here as well that we can use so let's say what we wanted to make this lorem ipsum text stand out right here this first text here we can actually go and if we want to we can space this out and we can highlight this first text here and we can make it a heading one to make it this large text here to stand out right at the start and that's a way that you can add larger text there's heading one through six in this case and here you can change the size basically a heading three and up will probably be okay for headings when you get to like four five and six it's not too much different than the paragraph text looks right here so you can go through that and explore with different text sizing now in this part right here we actually can make it bold we can also highlight some and make it italicized and if you're familiar with Microsoft Word, a lot of this is pretty similar to that in a way. So it shouldn't be that difficult. Right here, we can make a block quote, and I'll show you what that looks like. If we click on this icon right here, it basically will indent the whole thing as a quote. So if you wanted to, you would put quotes around this and say, Tom Johnson. <laughs> so I'll take credit for this lore Ipsum right here. <laughs> and now we'll move down here and if we wanted to make a list you can also do that a bulleted list and a numbered list here's where you could align to the left center and right and when aligning actually comes in play a lot is if you add an image so let's actually go and we're going to insert an image here we'll click where it says add media and now I'm just going to add this mountain image just one of the ones we have on here it says insert into post now if you see that it looks kind of funny the text is down here if we actually click on this image and then we click this align left which is the same as this align left we'll click align left and now the text will wrap around it and I actually suggest that you put images on the left side of your page rather than the right because let's say we align it to the right here 
we'll see that the text doesn't line up in a straight line. This word ends here, this one ends here, this one here. It's, it doesn't really quite work or fit how it should. If you align it to the left, it's straight in a line. It's a little bit more organized, in my opinion, to have the images on the left side of the page. Now we can also change some other things within here. If we want to, we can add a strike through. So let's say you had a deal or something and you're like, let's say this is 25% off. And then you want it to, you can actually go strike through and then say 50% off or something instead. I don't know, something like that. You can use that for this and you know, you could explore with that and, and, and try to find out ways to use it. I use a strike through for that occasionally. That's about the only time I use a strike through. I do use this one a little bit more, this horizontal row here. And this horizontal line, you can make it go into place and kind of break up content. So if you wanted to have a break between these paragraphs, you can add these. Now let's say you wanted to change text color. You can actually highlight something and change the text color. So let's make it red in this case. And now that text is red. We want to make this blue. We can highlight that, click on this, and then we can make it a blue color. So you can explore with this and change text colors if you would like. Now, a big important one, I should probably not make this blue, but you actually can make this blue one into a link. So if we click insert link, we can click on this gear icon here for the link options, and it gives you options. So let's go to HTTP forward slash and I'm going to do wpwithtom.com and I can click open link in new tab. If I wanted to come up in a completely new tab, I would probably do that rather than just leave it as is and then they'll leave your site. You want to keep them on your site as long as you can. So I would click open in a new tab rather than just have them leave your site for this other site you're linking to. And you can click add link and now this is actually a link. If we click on it, you can see it says wpwithtom.com. And if you needed to edit that, you can click here to edit it. And if you want to remove the link, there's how you would remove it. It's actually really straightforward when you're using this toolbar area because it's kind of similar to Word in a way. There shouldn't be that much of a learning curve. But it's good to explore this and kind of get familiar with it and kind of learn on your own a little bit with how this works. Now, another thing I wanted to point out is if you wanted to embed a YouTube video, it's actually really easy. So if we just go to YouTube and I'll just click I'll just type in WP with Tom and I'll get one of my own. So if I go and I click on this link here, it'll open up in a new tab and I'll just pause the video here and we can actually scroll down to where it says share right here, share. We'll click that and we'll click where it says embed and we'll get this code right here. We'll copy this code. And now if we go back here to the blog post area, we can go into where it says text and that's where the HTML would go and we can scroll down and let's just put this at the very bottom here and I'll paste that in and now I can go back up and I can click update I can click preview changes I'm actually just gonna click update in this case and then we'll refresh the changes here live on the post I'll X out of this YouTube video now and let's just refresh this blog post 3 and see some of the changes that we made so right off the bat, we can see the H1 text here at the star. We can see the bold here, italics here. We can see this block quote right there. If we scroll down, there's the image with the text wrapped around nicely aligned on the left here, the image. And over here, we have this strike through saying 25% off, then 50% off. And there's the red text. This blue text should be a link to wpwithtom.com, and it is. There's my website. And down here, there's another horizontal line, horizontal line again. Down here is the YouTube video that we just embedded. And by default below, there's actually a comment section down here. So that's how we can edit a lot of the features within the blog post. And I just want to go back here in the dashboard and add a plugin to show you something that's pretty powerful that will help us with our blog posts be a little bit more effective for people that want to share our content with others. So let's go down to where it says plugins and we'll click add new. And now we're going to type in access press as one word, social share. 
So access press as one word social share. And this is the one I want with this red circle that says access press social share on it. Now things that you should look for when you're adding a plugin is the rating on the plugin and when it is last updated and if it's compatible with your version of WordPress. All three of those things are important and it does help improve the security if those are all good. So let's install now and this will take a moment to install. And now it says install, we're going to have to activate it. So now we can see in our plugin section here, we have this activated. So if we actually want to, we can go to where it says access press social share, this new thing we have on the sidebar here in the dashboard, and we can click on that. And now we can choose where our links will be able to be shared. So if we want people to be able to share them with their email to somebody else, share them on LinkedIn, Pinterest, Google+, Twitter, Facebook, anywhere, they can easily do that. So you'll have to set that up. And when you're happy, you can click Save Settings. Now we can click on Share Options. And this will tell you where these options will be able to be shared. So let's just click on Posts Only. I like to have Posts Only. And it'll be able to be shared at the bottom of a blog post that we want. Now let's go to Display Settings. And I like to have it just below the content. And you're going to see what this looks like right down here. Here is the set of the icons and the themes that go with it. So this is theme one with the social sharing icons that will be below your blog post for other people to share your content on the social media platforms. This is a great way to increase your traffic and get more people having eyes on your blog posts that you make. So let's actually scroll down and you can see the different options. I'm just going to choose, I'm going to probably leave it with this one right here because I really like this option. And if you want to, you can go through these miscellaneous and other stuff. But for now, these options are probably good. And you just want to make sure you save the settings. And I'm going to go back and refresh this post. And now we'll be able to scroll down here and we'll see that below the post, people can share it on Facebook, tweet it, Google+, Pinterest, and email it to others as well if they want. And this is the tag for our post, by the way. So down here, they can actually leave a comment as well if they're interested in doing that and posting a comment. You can actually disable that if you would like. And for now, that's about it as far as posting a blog goes and adding this awesome social sharing kind of plugin right here. So next, I'm actually going to start touching on how to change some of these widgets here in the sidebar for these recent posts, recent comment archives categories and meta in case you want to change what's there delete some or add something else in there instead it's totally up to you so we're going to get into that here in the next part all right so editing our widgets here on the right side of the blog post is actually pretty simple to do and to do so we're actually going to go back here to the dashboard again and i actually see there's a plugin update i'm just going to go over quickly how to do that it's very simple we can just click on plugins and you'll see this one with the red circle around it when there's one plugin or two, three, whatever number there is that needs to be updated. And I'll just click update now. And that's a good thing because it keeps it more secure when there is updates to these plugins. You don't really want to let them get out of date, especially a bunch of them at a time. So now it says updated, the plugins updated to the newest version. And next we'll go to the widgets here and we'll go to appearance and then widgets to get started. So right here is exactly what we're seeing on the right sidebar of our blog posts in the widgets so there's recent posts recent comments and then we have archives categories and meta so if you wanted to replace some of those you could let's say you want to get rid of the comments section and you want to get rid of i'll say meta in this case you could also remove the search as well if you would like so we see right here I'll go to where it says recent comments and I'll click on this drop down arrow here and then I'll just simply click delete. You have the option to change how many comments you want to show and if you want to change that there and leave the comments you can do that. I'm going to just click delete and you actually don't have to save anything here it will auto save in a widget section. So if I wanted to also delete meta I'll click on this for meta and then I will delete that as well. It's pretty simple. Now if we go back and we refresh this we no longer have comments showing up here on the right sidebar and we no longer have the meta section that was down here at the bottom either. So that is how you can 
basically delete widgets. Now let's say you wanted to add another widget from the side over here. Let's say you wanted to add a calendar. You can actually just click on it and drag it and drop it right in and then click save. And if we go over here and we refresh again, we'll now see when we scroll down that there's a calendar. And notice how this one right here is blue. That's actually the day that this blog post was created on. These blog posts were all created on the 1st of January. And today is the 2nd of January now. So if you wanted to, you can add this so people can see when you posted blog posts on your website. It's a, really, I don't know if there's much more use to it than that, but that's what I would say is the biggest use for it. Now, you can also add other things in here. If you want to add a text widget, let's say, and add some text, maybe you want to say, um, thank you for taking a look at my blog, blah, blah, blah. You can add this in there as well. And sometimes themes come with these different widgets as well up here that you can add, and it's only theme-specific widgets here. So these are not ones you would see on a normal website's widgets within a WordPress website. So that's how you add and basically change these widgets here on a post. And this should be applicable to all posts. So if we go back, and this says blog post 3, I don't know if there's going to be much going on on blog post 2 and blog post 1, but if we click on it and we open it up, we'll see now there's search, recent post, archives, categories, and then the calendar here that we just added. So that's how you can change the widgets on the right sidebar of your blog post. Next we're going to get into adding some more elements here below this blog post area. Now this next part here is actually really easy. We're going to add more content below this blog post area and to do that we can actually go back here and we'll go to appearance and customize where we were before. And now when this page loads we'll go to where it says front page and front page widgets and we can add more widgets below this blog post area. So we can just click add widget and if we want to we can add something like let's add blocks here and here's where we'd have text for blocks. Now you can open up block one would be this, block two would be in the middle, and block three would be over here on the right. So if we click block one, we can just say, we can tell this Lauren Ipsum one, just to make sure the change goes into effect, and that's how you can test where it is, and that is the first block. So you can write about anything here. Um, wonderful service, you could write. And then, now if you wanted to, you can scroll down here to this second block and this would be the content in here if you wanted to edit this content this Lauren Ibsen text I'm not going to edit every text here but you would edit this area by clicking block one content it edits right here so next if we go down to block two I'm going to add this as something else premium support and then again if you wanted to edit this you could edit the text right here for this Lauren Ibsen text and next, I'll go to block three, and I'll just change this one to say WordPress tutorials. And notice that it is all caps by default, so that is something to note. Now, if we wanted to change the text color itself here, we can actually go down here, and I noticed that when I played around with this before, that the text actually doesn't always show up as the color change here, but when you refresh the site, after you save it and refresh the site, you can see that it does change the text. So this would be the block's title color right here, this little bit darker text. If you want it to, to be a lot darker, you can go right, click on this icon here with the color, and scroll down to make it darker. And then if you want to save and publish, we can actually go back and we'll refresh and look at this. And now you can see that it has this darker text color here for the titles. Now if we wanted to change the actual text color right here, we can do that by clicking on that right here, blocks text color, and now we can actually make it a little darker if we want, and I'll save that. Now let's go back here and we'll refresh and see that it's a little bit darker text, and it kind of stands out a little bit differently. Now the background color is this light gray, and I like this because it kind of divides the sections up. So I actually like this light gray color, but if you wanted to change that, you could change that as well. 
say you wanted something crazy, like you wanted to make it a red, and then we'll just save it. We'll refresh just to show you what it would look like. I definitely don't want red on mine, so I'm going to go back, and I'm basically going to go with a grayish color here, and I'll save it and publish because I want that slight difference. Maybe that's too much right there, but I want that slight difference in color. And then if I refresh it, you'll see that there's a difference in the color. Actually, maybe it would even go lighter than that. And you got to experiment with it and see what works for you, what you want. And I, I really like to have them broken up with this different color. I think it's a great way. And it's actually used by a lot of the bigger corporations that make websites to have this as a basic divider here between the sections. So you can add your own content in here and make it say whatever you want. You can actually change the order of the sections. So let's actually go back and click front page here on the left and front page widgets. And if you wanted to, you can drag this above and have the blocks now above the blog post area. So if you wanted to do that, let's save it. We'll go back here and we'll refresh. And now the premium support, wonderful service, WordPress tutorials, that's all above the blog post area here. So that's how you can edit that section of the site. Next, I'm actually going to add one more widget while we're here in the front page widgets area here. We can click add widget. And I'm going to add just this about section. But I'm actually not going to make this the about section since we have an about page. And I'm going to delete this. I'm going to put a learn a little more and I'm going to put about our why and then down here I would write content edit the content and I could write something like the reason why I decided to make these tutorials is because I believe everyone that has the desire to make a WordPress website should be able to if they're willing to put in the effort. And I'll just save that. You can add whatever you want there, but I just wanted to have some text. And then again, if you wanted to change this rhombus here, you can add a different icon. I'm going to leave it as is in this case, but you can explore with that and see what you like. And then again, you can click, change the heading color. I'll probably make it darker. And then I'll, the text color itself, I will probably also make this a darker color. Maybe not black, but it will be a darker color. And then the background color if you want it to have a little bit different shade you could I'm not going to in this case I'm actually going to do dot 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 after I kinda like how that looked learn a little more and I'll save it and publish And you can just play around in here and see what you like it's actually all up to you in this case you can explore and find out really what works best for you and what looks best to you and you can rearrange these again if you want to so let's say I wanted to break it up and I think a good style to do this is to actually have this text, this background with a gray in between these white ones. So let's say I want to have this blog post up here and then the blocks in the center with this gray background and then the white background below it. So if we refresh this page, let's just look at it from the top. So if we scroll down, we have our blog post here and then we have this, this gray background here and then we have a white background here. And that's about going to sum up the front page here. I just wanted to point out back here in the widgets that the only ones that are free are the ones that don't have this pop-up come up. Upgrade to Pro to unlock this. Upgrade to Pro. Upgrade to Pro. That would be something you'd have to pay for to be able to use. So we only have a few that we can actually use here. One, two, three, four. And if you wanted to add advanced text you can also do that but I'm just going with these widgets here that we added already so we added three of them and it looks pretty good I think for a free website theme and next we're going to actually get into how to edit our about page and then our contact page 
All right, so we're going to start by editing this about page. And if we go to it right now on the front end of the website here, we can see that we don't really have much going on here. It just says the site name with the logo and the menu here. And then it has this about page with barely anything on it. So I'm just going to go over a few things here. It's actually going to be a quick part to make this about page. And we're again going to go back and just delete this and to go back to the front end right here. So if we go to slash WP hyphen admin, we'll be back here in the dashboard again. And if we go to our pages, we can actually go to about and then click on about or click edit. Either one would work. And now once we're here, I'm actually going to add in some lorem ipsum text here to get started. Now I'm actually going to add two of them just to have a bunch of text. And the main thing I wanted to go into here is to add an image and wrap the image, but also expand this page here to be a full width page. Now I don't know what kind of content you want to have on your about page if you have one. I assume would be personal to you and what your kind of goal is and what you're trying to do with your website. So I'm just going to make this a very basic or general little bit here on this page. So I'm going to go to add media and I'm actually going to upload another file of myself here. I'll click select files and then I will go to the downloads section and I'll grab an image of myself. Now this is a transparent image that I have so I don't know if it's really going to look that great but you get the idea and now you can actually add alt text or a title if you would like and now I'm going to actually click on the image and then I'm going to align it to the left and here I'm just going to add basically a very basic thing that just says about me and I'm going to just highlight it and I'm going to make this an h1 text you can make it h2 if you would like it's kind of up to you here and then I'm just going to click update now if I go back and I refresh this you're going to see that it says about me it has this image with the text wrapped around it maybe another image would look better there it probably would but the main thing I want to show you is that here's the text and all our text is there but it kind of looks weird with this recent posts and archives and all this stuff from these widgets on the right side here and I think it would be better if we got rid of that so what we can actually do here is if we go back we can scroll down a little bit and then it says page attributes here on the right side and this says template default template what we can do is click on this and then we can make it a full width page and then we'll just click update and if we refresh this page here we'll see that now there's nothing on the right side and the full width did go into effect with this type of about page here. Now I'm going to get into how to edit this text a little bit going forward. I think I may have touched on it earlier. I'm not even sure. But next we're going to move on to the contact page. So let's go to where it says contact here. And in this contact page we'll actually have to go to pages back here in the dashboard. And before we do that actually we're going to have to add a plugin. So we'll have to go to where it says plugins and then add new and we're going to add a contact form plugin and this is the most popular contact form plugin it's called contact form 7 that's contact form 7 and it should look like this with this mountain it says 1 million plus active installs so it's a very popular plugin it's compatible with this version of wordpress and it was last updated four weeks ago so this is the one we're going to want to install here it says install will activate it and now we have this new contact page, this new contact tab on the left side. So if we click on that, we can actually go and it says contact form one. We can click edit on that. And here, the main thing that you're going to want to change is if you want to change these, you can, but I'm going to go the main thing here that you want to change is in mail and you want it to go to your email, your desired email for the site. That is the number one thing you want to change here. Now, if you want to, you can add other things in this section, like your name, your email, subject, and your message. That is what the users coming to your website will see. So it's key to have things that you like there, and you would just want to change the label only. You don't want to change any of this, or else it can mess this up. You just want to change right here. Just replace the text if you want to change that. I'm going to leave it as is. I think it's good for a standard one. And I'm just going to click Save here in the upper right. And now, if we go to where it says contact, again, let's just go click contact here on the left. 
and we're going to need this short code. We're going to click on this and then we can just copy it. You can right click and copy it. And now if we go back to where it says pages, we'll go to contact and click edit. And here I'm going to go into the text tab. I don't know if you necessarily have to in this case, but I think it's better to. And I'm going to add this in and then I'm just going to click update. Now again, we're going to have to get rid of this sidebar if we would like, which I'm going to do. But I just want to show you here it is. Here's our contact form. Your name, your email, subject, your message, and then it has the send button here. So we can keep that if we like it. I'm going to go click back on visual here. And now I'm actually going to hit enter and I'm just going to say contact me. I'm going to make that a heading one. And down here on the page attributes again, I'm going to make this default a full width page and I'm just going to update it. And now if we refresh, it will say contact me and now it'll be full width. You see how this message box takes up the full width and there's no longer the blog posts and recent comments and things like that on the, on the sidebar from the widgets. So that's something you can do if you don't want this text, you don't have to. It's a little redundant with it also saying contact right here by default. So you can have it however you want. I just wanted to show you how to add a quick contact form here. So we have our contact page and our about page pretty much completed. Now next I'm going to get into the footer area down here and we're going to go over how to remove this and how to add some social media icons that can link to your social pages that you have going for you. So we're going to go into this footer section down here at the bottom. So to do that, let's go back to the dashboard here and then we'll go to where it says appearance and then we'll go to customize again. And once this loads, we're going to go to where it says footer. And let's scroll down here on this right side and you can see there's now automatically there's been these social media icons added. So let's just go to where it says footer style here. And you actually have this scroll up button. That's what this is over here. It's kind of hard to see, but if you click it, it will take you right up to the top. So that's a nice feature I like to have there. Now, if you want to, you can also change the text color if you want to have text down here in the bottom and the background color as well and the widget color. So I'm going to leave those as is and I'm just going to click back on footer style and I'm going to click where it says copyright area. And this is the main part I want to show you. If you want to edit the content, and this is the copyright area right here, we can click edit content, and then we can actually go and delete this and save it and close it if you would like, and that gets rid of the optimizer copyright. That is something that a lot of people struggle with, and it's nice that they add this feature into the free theme. A lot of free themes, they make it a pain to get rid of that, so that's a really nice feature that they've added that in here. And if you want to save and publish, we can actually refresh Let's go to the home page here and then we'll scroll down and see that now there's nothing down here and the social media icons actually didn't show up here. So what we're going to have to do is go back here and let's just click on footer again. Oops, actually we're going to need to go to, let's just go back here and go to miscellaneous. That's what I meant to say, miscellaneous. And now you see there's social links and they come up here. To add a link, we actually go down here and by default it shows them all. But if we want to add a link, let's just say we wanted to add twitter.com. And then you would add your URL from your page on Twitter. Mine would be twitter.com slash WP with Tom. And then you could also add facebook.com. You could add youtube.com. You can add your icons here. And then after you're happy with that, you just click save and publish. It's going to look a little different than what you see down there when we refresh, I believe. So let's just refresh it. And there we go. There's the three Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube would be down here at the bottom. If you hover over it, you can see it down here. It will display which the site it's going to go to. So it should say your address when you do add that in here. So that is how you would add the social icons to the footer. If you wanted to, you actually can add them to the top as well. So where it says social icon position, you can go to header. And if we save and publish it there, let's refresh and we'll go up to the top. And there they are right here along the menu here. So you can add it to either one. It's totally up to you. 
And actually, when I did that, it deleted the footer area, it looks like. I, I hadn't done that before, so that's a little surprising to me even. So that's an option if you want to have this up here at the top. It's really up to you on how you want to do that. I, I actually kind of like it at the top here, but you can uh, choose the footer or the header, whatever you would like. So you can also change the icon size here if you really want it to stand out. If you put it in the footer, you might want to make it larger. It's really kind of up to you and what your desire is from your site. If you want them to go to your social media pages really badly, maybe you'll have them larger. I'm going to leave them normal here in this case. But if you do put them in the footer, I would recommend making them larger so it actually stands out a little more when they're at the bottom of the site. So next we can actually go into another page here within where it says post and pages. And I'm going to start to clean this up a little bit on the site here. So if we wanted to, we can actually go to where it says post settings. And this is how we would actually disable comments from being on our posts. Now, I personally think it's a good thing to have posts with comments on them. So let's just save this real quick. And then if we click on blog post three here and scroll down, you're going to see that there's, let's refresh it. It will look better on this one. Um, and we'll click blog post three and let's scroll down. And now there's no comment section here at the bottom. Now, if you want them enabled, we'll click this to the right and save it and we'll refresh. And now it will have this comment section. And I think comments are mostly good to have here because it kind of shows that there's interest in your site. You can interact and engage with your customers or people that are viewing your blog or whatever it may be. And it kind of helps you with Google a little bit with the rankings, I think, when there's activity on your site like that. But it's up to you here if you want the comments or not. If you want, you can easily just disable them here. That's the main thing I want to show you in this part. Now I also wanted to go and show you something else. If we go to where it says basic, we can actually change the basic fonts here. Let's go to basic fonts. And if we want to, we can change what the font will look like. So if you're not happy with the size 16, you can maybe make it, let's just do something that'll show up, make it size 20. And you can see there's a large difference there between the size. Now we'll go to 14 and now it's much smaller. By default, they have it at 16. I think 16 is a pretty good font size. You might want to go 15, 16. It's a good range. And you also can change the font style right here. It has open sans by default, which is a good font. But if you wanted to change this, you can totally do that to differentiate yourself a little bit here. So another thing that you can do is go to where it says basic style. And it says the site content text color which is this right here. If you think this light gray here is kind of hard to read, you can go and make it darker by clicking on it and then going and making it a little darker here. And I actually like that a lot. I'm going to save and publish that. And I really like how that font actually shows up a lot nicer there. So you can also go to where it says site identity and we can add a fab icon here. And for those of you who don't know what a fab icon is, it's the icon that you see right up here, right up here on the top of the site that will basically be your little miniature logo for the site. And there's actually a free website that you can do this at, and there's actually a few of them, but the one I like the most is called logomaker.com. That's L-O-G-O-M-A-K-R. There's no E in it. And I like to go here. I'll skip through the prompts here, and I'm just going to type in something like computer in this case. And if I find a nice little computer image that I like, I can scroll through, scroll down here and see if there's any that are stand out to me that I really like how it looks. And once I find one, I'll just use this one here. I want to make it 512 by 512 pixels wide and tall. And that's where you're going to make this change right here. And if we go back here, I know it's that much because if you hover over this, it will say it should be at least 512 pixels wide and tall. Now it's best to make it a square because then it will work well. And let's just make this 550 by 550. And now we can click on the icon here that's been generated for us and we'll expand it. And you want to expand it to the edges of the canvas right here that we're working in. And I say that because we have only a very small area to work in up here. This little tiny thing. This little, this image is going to have to fit in this little tiny area. So we want it to be as big as it could possibly be. Now, if you want to change the color, you can do that over here in the link wheel. 
and you can find one that stands out. And I might actually go with a lighter one in this case, since we're working in the incognito mode here, we actually want one that will show up well on here. So maybe I'll use one that's a lighter color text. And I don't want something that's similar text like this darker gray or whatever would be similar to this. So it'd be kind of hard to see. So if we want it, I can make it something like this and this light one on this darker background here. And then I can just click save logo right next to it. And then it automatically will download to our computer. Now we can actually go back here and click on where it says site icon, select image, upload files, select files. And now we can find the logo that we just made or the fab icon, I should say. And I'm actually going to title this fab icon here. And if you wanted to, you can make the alt text as well change. And I will just, in this case, I'll have to crop the image and now save it and publish. Now if we go back over here, let's refresh and we can actually see that now it's the computer with the check mark on it as our fab icon here at the top. So that's a pretty quick, cool way to make a fab icon for your website. And that's about all we're going to cover in this section here. In the next part, we're actually going to go back to the home page here and we're going to start going over how to add Yoast SEO for search engine optimization to basically point our website in the right direction towards search engines so we can hopefully be found more easily by people trying to look for our type of content. So let's get into that here next. All right, so before we wrap up this tutorial here, I'm going to actually X out of this for the logo maker and then I'm going to show you how to basically set up a plugin called Yoast SEO and we can go back here to the dashboard area by again deleting that and keeping WP hyphen admin we'll go back and here we're going to go to where it says plugins add new and then we're going to search for one called Yoast SEO that's Y-O-A-S-T SEO and it's going to be this one with a stoplight here and we're just going to click install now again it has over a million active installs and it was recently updated and it is compatible with this version of wordpress so those are three great things to have with a plugin it does take a little bit to install this so we got to be patient here and now it says installed and activate we'll just activate this and it always has these little messages come up with notifications and they kind of bug me so i'm just going to go to that first up here at the top I'm just going to click this and click this again and I'll save those changes. That'll get rid of these notifications. So we can actually, I guess we have one more here and now we can X out of that one as well and save it. And now we don't have these pop-ups anymore. And this is from Yoast right here. It says go premium. These all kind of bug me a little bit, but it is what it is. It's a great plugin and it's free to use. So it's kind of hard to complain too much. Now, if we go over to posts here, let's just go into blog post we'll go into blog post number two in this case and let's go here to blog post number two and we'll go to that on the home page here into this blog post now once we get here we'll see that we just have lorem ipsum text and seo to get started with that let me just go over seo is search engine optimization and basically it's what helps you get found within google so We'll have this area now down below where our text is for this blog post too. If we go up here, it says post number two. Here's the text area. And down here, it will say focus keyword. And we'll want to have a focus keyword. So I'm just going to add in some other text real quick here. Post number two I'm going to put. And I'm going to make it a header one. And now if we see on the right side, we have this thing it says readability okay and it has this Y on it that's orange so this gives us an idea of how we're doing for SEO now red on a stoplight would be like stop and that would be negative it would be a bad thing green would be go and this orange or yellow whatever you would like to call it this orange here would be kind of in the middle it's like average so we'd have to have a focus keyword and just to go with the trend our page name is post number two we have this header one with post number two in it. I'm just going to add post number two right here in the text. 
I'm actually going to add it twice. Post number two. And hopefully this will help you get an idea if we make our focus keyword post number two. Now we have the keyword showing up as green. It just updated from orange to green. And that means we're doing well for this keyword that we're focusing on post number two. And down here it gives you an analysis briefly of what you can do to improve. See the keyword density is 1.1% which is great. It's fo the focus keyword, which is post number two, is found three times. Now, it would be helpful if we add a, a little bit more words to get over 300. And it says no links appear in the page, considering adding them if it's appropriate. And the title is too short, so we can make a better title, I guess. But part of why I like the title is because it has the keyword in it, post number two. This page link right here, the URL, has the post number two in it right here as well. And the header has post number two and the content has post number two two other times in here so you don't want to overdo it i want to make that clear but you want to get this to be green that's really essential for your on-page seo and to be clear on-page seo meaning this side of it is only part of the battle the big battle is really getting links and backlinks and social media buzz and all kinds of other factors that can really help you to rank better on Google but you have to have this in order and be basically a green to even have a chance of ranking for keywords that you're going for if not it's going to be very difficult to rank so you want to try to go through these and get as many of these to green and get this to green for each page that's really important to you now there may be some blog posts that you just rattle off and you don't really care if they're ranking Google or not and maybe if that's not your goal here then it doesn't really matter what your page is showing here. It could be red, it could be orange, it doesn't really matter. But if you're really trying to be found in Google and grow your website and grow your audience, then you want to have this be green. It's very important. It's really vital. Now, I will say there's so much more to Yoast in this plugin. And there's actually like full-length tutorials on YouTube about Yoast. Some are like an hour long. I'm not going to go in that kind of detail right now. But I wanted to at least introduce you to the plugin and show you really generally how to get it structured in a way that will benefit you with being found within Google and other search engines by making these points and being able to use this analysis to better improve your web pages. So that's all I really wanted to go over here in this part. And if we just click update just to have it go into effect, we can go back here and now we're going to see that this post number two is in here and it's also within the text as well. So that will show up as green here for us when we're logged in. But if we're logged out, we won't be able to see any of this bar right here. So that's how you would add this to the website. And that about sums up this tutorial here. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to build out this website with me. I really appreciate your time that you put into it. If you made it this far into the tutorial, I know you probably made a wonderful looking website. And I just wanted to basically go over this real quick and show some of what we made here. This home page is definitely the one that stands out the most with this awesome feature when we scroll down. The latest blog posts here with these three awesome images that are clickable to open up the blog posts. We have these sections where we can talk about services or text that we want to display there. And here's a little bit about why we actually made this company and we can scroll up with that awesome effect there. We have this basic about me page here with just some text wrapped around an image. And here we have a basic contact form as well with our send button down there at the bottom that will be sent to our email. As well as these social media icons here at the top. And we can click the logo to go back to the home page again. So I really appreciate it if you stuck with me. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, full length websites built out. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. And I intend to keep making a lot more tutorials, not just full length ones, but also little tips and tricks, as well as more tutorials for beginners. So just feel free to subscribe, comment below with any questions that you might have related to WordPress, and I'll do my best to try to get back to you about them. And thanks again for watching, everyone. I appreciate it.